Okay, so we're now on to the counterclaim and rebuttal stage. So you've already developed two claims. So in this last body paragraph, you're actually just developing your third claim. So you already, you've already researched it, you know what you're asserting, you know how it helps to prove your argument, but we have to set it up a little bit differently. You know, if you're in a real debate, you're going to have the other side presenting very valid claims and you can't just ignore them. You would acknowledge one of their points at least, but then you would try to come up with a rebuttal. You know, you would try to make that claim seem less valid, less logical or less powerful. And so we're working backwards in a sense that you know what claim you wanna make already and it's gonna be a rebuttal, but you have to figure out a way to come up with a counterclaim that you can then refute with your rebuttal, which is your claim three. So let me start by going over um, the counterclaim and rebuttal notes that we have linked in here. Definitely make sure you use these. So step one is going to be to go back to your claim research for claim three in your drive and look at your final claim. Step two is going to be thinking of a specific counterclaim that the other side might make to make your argument look weak or um, like it should not be considered as true uh, or valid. So you want to be able to make your third claim a rebuttal to that counterclaim. You know, so again, this is backwards. Normally, you know, you, you hear some of their claims and then you just pick one to acknowledge and then you find a way to refute it. Here we know we want to make a rebuttal that incorporates your third claim. So we're going to, you know, since we don't really have the debate happening, we're going to think about another claim that that other side might have that will work with <laughs> claim three. So let's say that the argument is over whether or not cell phones should be permitted in the schools. And let's say one of your claims is that teachers can actually use cell phones to enhance their lessons and keep students more engaged. You know, we know there are a lot of apps out there now that can be used as part of lessons. And you know that I think one of the biggest complaints with cell phones uh, is that, oh no, they're just distracted on their phones. They're looking at things that uh, would distract them from their actual academic work. So you know you wouldn't argue that cell phones can be used to keep students engaged. So what counterclaim would you come up with so that you could use this as your rebuttal and develop it? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, if your argument is that students should be allowed to have their cell phones in school, a counterclaim might be that cell phones distract students from the lessons and activities in the classroom. You know, they might be busy on social media or with games. That definitely would come up as a counterclaim. But you're going to refute that easily and specifically with your rebuttal. While critics may say that cell phones distract students from the lessons and activities in the classroom, Teachers can actually use cell phones to enhance their lessons and keep students more engaged. So I want you to see how my rebuttal specifically addresses my counterclaim. Both of them are specific, one uh, against, one for. So as you're thinking about Animal Farm, uh, you would go back to whatever your third claim is. So let's say in this case, you are arguing that the animals are at fault. And let's say you want to use this as your rebuttal. So what you might say is critics of the animals might say that the pigs are at fault because they used propaganda to spread false information. Now here's where your rebuttal comes in. However, the animals should not have blindly accepted that false information because they should have been thinking critically. So you can see there where I have a really specific 
invalid counterclaim, but my rebuttal here works perfectly. And now I can develop that rebuttal and I can shut down their counterclaim. So let's just look at an example over here. So here, let's say that I'm arguing that the um, pigs are at fault. So I might say, you know, critics of the animals might argue that at any time the animals could have chosen to um, refuse the rules, commandments, etc., passed down from Napoleon. But my rebuttal could be, however, fear is a powerful tool for controlling the actions of others against their will. They were not in a position to refuse any of his commandments because they were scared for their lives. So again, you can see how I used a very specific counterclaim. And then I have a specific rebuttal, which becomes my claim three. And then I can... Um, Flush it out and support it as I did with my other paragraphs. So just as with the other paragraphs, you have to have your outside source and you have to have your text support from your novel. Um, your topic sentence, that's where you're gonna do your counterclaim and rebuttal. Now you can make this two separate sentences. It can be one sentence. Um, you definitely want to take a look at this counterclaim and rebuttal, rebuttal language. It's going to be very helpful. You know, while some critics or supporters may argue that, while some critics or supporters assert one criticism of blank is, some might feel that blank is a problem. A common misconception is, and some really good transitions for rebuttals. However, despite these criticisms, on the other hand, although that point is worth consideration, while that might be a valid criticism, the benefit of blank outweighs blank. And if you need some more in-depth help, we have a more specific counterclaim and rebuttal presentation here that you can go through. We also have a number of examples that you can look through if you need um, you know, to see some additional counterclaims and rebuttals. So I think those will be really helpful. And we even linked in yet another example. So there are a lot of resources here if you need some additional help. So you'll set up that counterclaim and rebuttal, and then you're gonna develop your rebuttal the same way you develop the first two claims. You're gonna introduce the source, cite the source, explain the source in two to three sentences, transition, repeat, explain, cite, explain. Um, we have your sources here how to embed literary evidence, how to embed informational text and the transitions. These are the same documents from the other two paragraphs, but they're here. You'll just notice that we didn't break this down in as much detail, but this is the third time that you've done this. So you're now just transferring all of those skills from the first two claims to this last one. You're gonna write it down here below, and it is important that you color code your, count, your counterclaim and your rebuttal the yellow and the green. If you want to run your counterclaim and rebuttal by your teacher, we're all um, glad to take a look. If you'd like, just reach out to us and we can approve them if you need any help.